Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here, friends. Welcome to ShareTrek. Now, probably the only um, YouTube channel that is focused on CRISPR th- th- CRISPR-based therapies. Uh, we do coverage of CRISPR therapeutics and other uh, genomic companies in this channel, and we also done AI. Today's edition is going to be talking about the state of CRISPR-based therapies, the landscape of CRISPR-based therapies, and why, despite having success with CASJV. CRISPR therapeutics has to be running fast in order to maintain its lead. So we're going to look at uh, not only CRISPR Cas9 but also base editing and prime editing. And I have got examples of all the uh, disease areas in which therapies are being done and where they have reached. So this is a very uh, important video. Please watch till the end and subscribe to the channel if you are not yet done so. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. The state of CRISPR-based therapies, uh, or rather the landscape of CRISPR-based therapies has reached a pivotal moment marked by the first ever approval of a CRISPR-based medicine, CASJV, in the late 2023s. This breakthrough uh, therapy, a collaboration between CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex Pharmaceuticals, targets sickle cell disease and TDT, and this approval of uh, CASJV by the UK's Medicines and Health uh, Products Regulatory Agency on November 16, 2023, followed by the US FDA's uh, approval on December 8, 2023, represents a monumental achievement in the field of gene editing. The European Union and Bahrain have also approved the therapy which further, uh, with further submissions planned for Canada and Saudi Arabia. So that's the uh, extent to which uh, this therapy has managed to uh, spread across. There are other companies also which have got um, uh, gene therapies for sickle cell disease, but they have not gone global. Bluebird, for example, is uh, re- restricted to just United States. The speed at which CRISPR has moved from lab to clinically approved therapy in just over a decade or rather 11 years is nothing short of remarkable and it signals a new era in the clinical development of genome editing. With this approval, the theoretical potential of CRISPR has been realized, moving beyond the speculation to concrete curative applications. This opportunity presents to the genomic companies uh, a very uh, significant um, uh, future. And I would say that uh, what we have done so far in the genomic um, uh, companies, uh, what they have done so far is just pick the low hanging fruit with minor edits. There are potential cures ahead, uh, which could be even more lucrative, but that are more complex and may need more specialized tools. The way one of the scientists summed this up was to say that two diseases down, 5,000 more to go. And I'm very optimistic because uh, the mapping of the human genome and the subsequent identification of zones on the human genome where edits can cause cancer uh, helps a lot in the selection of disease target and remedial approach, thus making it very less risky. And again, AI is going to be able to uh, enable selecting the best target disease and the best approach uh, to correct the genetic defect and thereby reduce the possibility of including potentially failing therapies into the pipeline and wasting time and money on them. And this in turn will improve the risk profile of the gene therapy companies. So that's the way I'm looking at it with a lot of optimism. But this optimism has to be looked at from a time scale perspective. This optimism is not for today or tomorrow. It's for a decade to come. And There are a lot of challenges and shifts in the CRISPR uh, medicine landscape that have happened in this last 11 years. Uh, However, uh, we have to be uh, cautious in our enthusiasm uh, because there are still significant challenges. The biotechnology sector, including CRISPR-focused companies, have faced financial pressures uh, due to a decline in venture capital investment, and you have seen the high interest rate environment has made it uh, difficult for venture capitalists to take risks. And this has forced many companies to narrow their focus, concentrating on the most advanced products in their pipeline, rather than expanding into new disease areas. As a result, layoffs have occurred and only uh, one new disease area, autoimmunity, saw a clinical trial initiated in 2024 so far. We would have loved to see half a dozen uh, clinical trials initiated, but that has not happened. This is similar to the situation where uh, as interest rates uh, increase, Uh, people are not able to book new uh, construction so builders uh, stop new starts so this is something similar to that and it does not bode very well for the future because the growth of 
uh, CRISPR therapies and uh, monetization of those therapies is getting delayed. And as a result, realizing superlative returns on our investment in genomic company is getting delayed, not declined. So we have to keep that in mind when we look at the price of CRISPR therapeutics. Uh, when we wonder why has it not picked up, it's basically because we need more therapies into the pipeline and we need more therapies approved and in the market. And right now in 2024, that doesn't seem to be happening. Innovative regulatory approaches and support for clinical trials, particularly for rare diseases, will be crucial in expanding the pipeline of CRISPR-based therapies. The high cost of clinical trials and the pressure to deliver returns to investors continue to shape the industry's trajectory. You can see Bluebird, despite having three approved gene therapies, struggling uh, to gain any value. And I would say that if you look at the uh, entire area of um, uh, deployment of uh, CRISPR-Cas9, uh, you'll see a lot of um, different applications. I'm going to show you a diagram or a, or a figure out here that will help you to uh, look at a complete picture. As you can see here, we have uh, hemoglobinopathies, which is SC, SCD and TDT, uh, already approved. That is the CRISPR therapeutics one that we are looking at and Bluebird. Then we have chronic uh, bacterial infection, that's the UTI and that's in phase three, ready to be uh, approved. Then we have uh, ATTR related uh, therapies that are also in phase three, ready to be approved. And HAE is in phase two, uh, along with a bunch of cancer th therapies. And then in cardiovascular disease, HIV AIDS, diabetes, and autoimmunity uh, like lupus, uh, we have a bunch of therapies which are in phase one clinical trial. So this is how I would summarize. So first, let us look at blood dis uh, disorders, sickle cell disease, and uh, transfusion-dependent uh, beta thalassemia or TDT uh, have been addressed through CASDEV's approval, and it is backed by robust data from phase three trials, where 25 out of 27 TDT patients became transfusion-independent, and 16 of 17 sickle cell disease patients experienced complete freedom from the VOEs or uh, vasoacclusive crises that they used to suffer from. That characterizes the illness. And the durability of these results with patients remaining free of symptoms for years in some cases underscore the treatment's potential as a functional cure. Despite these promising outcomes, access to CASGV is constrained by technological and financial hurdles. The therapy is complex to manufacture and deliver, limiting its ability, uh, its availability to a few specialized centers. Moreover, the co treatment's cost of approximately $2 million per patient poses significant challenges, even in countries like the US, where the healthcare system may not fully support such high expenditures. And despite the long-term savings associated with curing these diseases, it's still expensive. And then I would also say that uh, if you look at uh, the fact that um, the conditioning uh, agents that are being used uh, for the uh, lymphodepletion in case of uh, SCD with CASGV, uh, that still needs improvement and uh, CRISPR therapeutics is working on that. And once those improvements are in place, then the physical uh, discomfort that is uh, accompanied uh, with uh, this treatment will also be reduced and also potentially the 30 day stay or so uh, for the entire lymphodepletion and um, post uh, lymphodepletion support uh, will also be reduced. So that can reduce the cost to a certain extent and that can increase the patient comfort and quality of life to a good extent. And then we have uh, beyond CASGV, there are other companies which are making strides in treating blood disorders using CRISPR technology. Eritas Medicine is conducting phase one slash two trials using a CRISPR system with Cas12A protein to turn on fetal hemoglobin in sickle cell disease and TDT patients. Early results are promising with all treated patients showing significant improvement. We also have Beam Therapeutics that has initiated trials using base editing, a refined form of CRISPR-Cas9 technology to treat severe sickle cell disease. This approach minimizes safety risk by avoiding double standard DNA break, breaks and Beam's data expected in late 2024 will further uh, illuminate the potential of base editing in treating genetic disorders. Both CRISPR therapeutics and Beam are also exploring in vivo editing, which could eliminate the need for intensive chemotherapy and make the treatments more accessible. This research, although in its early stages, could revolutionize the delivery of CRISPR therapies by simplifying the process and reducing the cost. And the way you should look at it probably is that we are taking low-hanging fruits and we are delivering uh, easy to 
deliver approach first and then we are going to further refine it and make it even better and the cost will also go up but with scale you can expect the costs to come down uh, subsequently but that's a natural progression apart from this we have chronic bacterial inf infections and protein folding diseases uh, that have been addressed with uh, crispr's potential uh, for uh, addressing diseases and um, locus biosciences is a company that is pioneering the use of crispr cas3 in treating uh, chronic urinary tract infections or utis this uh, innovative approach combines bacteriophages with cr crispr technology to target and destroy bacterial DNA, offering a new avenue for treatment uh, resisting uh, or, or antibiotic resistant uh, infections. In the area of uh, protein folding diseases, Intelia Therapeutics is uh, using CRISPR-Cas9 delivered via lipid uh, nanoparticles to treat hereditary uh, transthyretin am amyloidosis or HATTR. Early results from phase one slash two trials are promising with significant reductions in toxic uh, protein levels and the FDA has greenlighted Intelia to proceed to phase 3 trials bringing this potential treatment closer to market and CRISPR's role in treating inflammatory diseases and cancers is also notable CRISPR's versatility is being tested in inflammatory diseases like hereditary angioedema or HAE where Intelia Therapeutics is again at the forefront with a systemic CRISPR-Cas9 treatment that reduces inflammation causing proteins. Early trials have shown impressive results with patients experiencing a significant reduction in uh, inflammation attacks. And then if we turn our attention to cancer treatment, CRISPR is being harnessed to provide uh, CAR T cell therapies. Well, allogenic CAR T cell have uh, faced challenges including immune rejection and frequent relapses. Research continues into refining these therapies to make them more effective and scalable. Already there are uh, CAR T therapies in the market which are autologous and they have a black label from the FDA but allogenic uh, CAR T therapies have the potential of overcoming those uh, deficits. And the future of uh, CRISPR depends on overcoming hurdles and realizing potential. While the approval of, uh, approval of CASJV marks a significant milestone, the road ahead for CRISPR-based therapies is complex. Financial pressures, especially right now until the rate cuts start coming in, is significant. Manufacturing challenges and the issue of accessing uh, these medicines and affordability will need to be addressed to fully realize the potential of CRISPR in treating a wide range of diseases, especially because uh, gene therapy by its own uh, nature is very expensive and therefore it's out of reach of many people and the progress made so far is a testament to the transformative power of CRISPR technology but the journey is just beginning right now only affluent people who can afford are able to uh, buy these therapies and in future we'll see this uh, therapy getting more secular and more people being able to afford it and continued innovation investment and collaboration will be essential in overcoming the hurdles that remain and bring the next generation of CRISPR therapies uh, to patients worldwide. And I love looking at this particular um, chart uh, basically because it gives me a very good insight uh, overall overview of where we are and it looks quite promising so all the gene therapy companies which are involved in these areas are going to find uh, a lot of uh, opportunity. Uh, and I'll just give you some of the names at the top of uh, my mind. Uh, if you look at uh, cancers, you have CRISPR therapeutics with uh, at least uh, uh, two candidates that are in uh, clinical trials. And there are other companies as well which are uh, creating CAR T therapies for cancers. And uh, for cardiovascular disease also, CRISPR therapeutics has got some candidates. And we have got other companies also doing on that. For HIV or AIDS, we have got um, Excision Bio and uh, Ad Immune or American Gene Technologies, they are working on um, HIV therapies which are in an advanced stage of clinical trial. I would say phase one clinical trial has been done for excision, uh, but uh, they want to increase the dosage. And uh, American Gene Therapy is ready for phase one B uh, in HIV uh, trials. And then for diabetes, we have got uh, CRISPR therapeutics with a candidate in advanced stages in uh, of clinical trial in Canada. And uh, we have uh, for lupus also crit uh, CRISPR therapeutics is uh, working on a uh, th gene therapy and I think overall uh, there's a lot of promise and this is one of the reasons why I am uh, very positive about um, 
CRISPR therapeutics. And uh, I think CRISPR has a CRISPR therapeutics has a lot of uh, potential. It's got plenty of cash. It's got plenty of alliances. And it has proved that it can work with partners. And it has proved that it can harness CRISPR Cas9 and deliver. My only uh, thought regarding CRISPR therapeutics would be that they need to use other Cas proteins as well and use other gene editing technologies like base and prime editing and uh, improve their ability uh, to use CRISPR tools. And I think they might already be working with some of those, but we need to have a formal understanding that they are doing so because that will future proof CRISPR therapeutics uh, because CRISPR Cas9 per se would have some limitations and the other Cas proteins offer a wide range of uh, flexibility and specificity uh, for the purpose. With that, my friends, I would like to bring this video to an end and I'll catch up with you again in the next video. I hope you like this video and please let me know what you think about the future of CRISPR therapies and especially CRISPR therapeutics. Do you think at around $48 or below $50, CRISPR therapeutics is a buy or would you wait a little longer to buy? I'd like to hear from you. Please put it in the comment section. I'll catch up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.